hello everybody i hope you all are doing well y'all we made it to friday and if you are anything like me you probably have ran a lap around your house today knowing that you have made it to friday come on won't he do it uh, but i wanted to talk to you all very briefly while i'm on my lunch break as you can see i'm in my car as always and i wanted to talk about trusting god and just explain a little bit about how you can really learn to trust God in your everyday life because I know for me this was one of the hardest things um, to really grasp when I first started really being serious about my walk with God and that's because I had been through so much in my life and really back when I really became serious about my walk with God I've been saved since I was nine years old but um, I got serious about my, wasn't nobody going to tell me my hair was lopsided. I got serious about my walk with God um, in my young adulthood back in 2015. And um, one of the hardest things for me to do was trust God because I had been through so much trauma in my childhood and then trauma in relationships, trauma as a, uh, as a young adult that I always wanted to be in control because for me, if I was in control, then that meant I felt comfortable. I felt like my trust in the amount of control that I had was enough to comfort me and get me through. And I think we all feel like that in some respects, right? Because we've been through so much in life that we learn to depend on ourselves we learn that well if nobody else is gonna be there for me i'll be there by myself or the adage of i can do bad all by myself and so we learn to we take that into even our relationship with god and we apply that to the way that we engage in relationship with him because we don't know how to relinquish control and so the greatest thing that i struggled with in my my journey to learn how to trust God was that I wanted to be in control. I was going to pray, but I was going to tell God what I was going to do, right? I was going to ask God for the thing, but I was going to have a backup plan in case he didn't come through. And so I, as I continue to grow with God, because he's so loving y'all, he really does give us so much grace and mercy. And he loves us so much that he understands our pain. He understands why we think and feel the way we do. He knows all about our traumas and all about the things that have broken us and the things that have fractured the way that we think and see life. And so he will meet you where you are. Don't think that because you're going through something right now and you, you're feeling like you're struggling too hard to trust God so he's not going to be a good father to you. That's a lie straight from the pit of hell. That's the devil trying to keep you from praying, keep you from trying, keep you from continuing to press forward. But what God did for me was he taught me through life experience how to trust him. He taught me by continuing to be a good father. He taught me by loving me and showing me grace and mercy in the areas that I was weak. He knew I was having a hard time trusting him. And he knew I was having a hard time trusting him because I did not trust people. Um, as a survivor of childhood sexual abuse where i was raped and molested for many years by a family member an older cousin um i learned very early on not to trust people i learned very early on to compartmentalize and to detach myself and i learned very early on that nobody was going to protect me like i was going to protect me and so if you think about it that's really the devil's goal is to Create a circumstance in your life early on that teaches you not to trust people, teaches you to isolate yourself because you think nobody can take care of you like you can, nobody can protect you like you can. And that is really the antithesis of what God is and who God is. So we take the brokenness from our life and we apply that to our relationship with God. But God is a good father. He's a gentleman. He's gracious. He's loving. He's kind. He's soft with us. He loves us, y'all. And ain't nobody going to ever protect you in this world like he will. Nobody is going to love you like he will. The Bible says that he is our refuge and our hiding place. I think that's Psalm 32, verse 7. He's our refuge. He's our hiding place. Refuge means this is where I go when I'm seeking a place of safety. This is where I run 
when I need to hide, when I want to be protected, when I want to be shielded and kept away, when I want to be made safe. That is what refuge is. So when we talk about the Bible calling God our refuge, he is our very hiding place. He is our very safe place. He is the place where we go when we want to get away from all the brokenness of this world, of our lives, all the pain and the hurt that we have experienced. We take that to him because he is the hiding place. And so the devil teaches you early on through these life experiences and these horrific things that he causes to happen in your life not to trust God because you don't trust people. But I want to tell you how loving God is, y'all. Because he knew the experience that I, experiences I had had in my early life that caused me not to trust, he gave me experiences that turned that around. Even in my bitterness and in my fear to trust, he provided experiences with him, intimate experiences with him, where I got to know him in a safe way, where he showed me what it felt like to be safe with him, where he picked me up and brought me out of circumstances that I could not figure out. So then he proved wrong the thought process that I can, I'm the only person that can take care of me because he taught me through experience that he would take care of me. There were things that I was trying to figure out and I could not, but he did. He brought me out of it and he made a way. And so he said, okay, now we can check that off your list. Now you know that I will take care of you when you can't take care of yourself. There were people that broke my heart. In fact, at this point in my life, I was going through a breakup with somebody that I genuinely believed I was going to marry, who not only betrayed me once, but betrayed me over and over and over again in the worst imaginable ways. And I went back into that space of nobody can protect me like I can protect me. So I'm going to go into my little hiding place and I'm not going to let nobody in. But God, through the heartbreak, loved on me, y'all. He would do the smallest things for me. He would hear me. He would hear my thoughts about something when I was having a bad day where I might be thinking about something that would make my day or something that would make my day better or something that would make me feel happy or safe. And he would do it, y'all. I will never forget in 2017, anybody that's been with me, been rocking with me for a while, y'all know I love Bath and Body Works. I will never forget how God took one day I was I got an email because if you know you know if you part of that email crew baby you know about them emails and I remember I was struggling I was working two jobs I was exhausted I could barely make ends meet with my two jobs and I remember being broke as a joke one day y'all I didn't hardly have no food but it was fall and I remember thinking to myself it's such a cold, beautiful day outside. And I wish I had my favorite fall candle from Bath and Body Works to burn when I get home tonight because that would just really make my evening after the day that I had had. And I was thinking this on my way to work and I got to work and I got my day started. One of my coworkers came in and she gave me a card. And some of y'all might remember, I can't remember if I had made a post about it on Instagram or Facebook. I don't think I made a video about it during that time, but I'm not sure. But I know for sure that I had made either a Facebook or Instagram post about it. Because y'all, I just cried because I knew it was nothing but God. I had not spoken that desire to anybody. It was just in my mind. I was just thinking about it to myself. My coworker came in that morning and she came over to my desk y'all she bought me my favorite coffee a beautiful um a beautiful card and in the card was not only enough money for me to go get that beautiful candle that i wanted but it was money for me to be able to get some food that i needed too until i got paid so not only did he hear the the like special intimate thing that i was thinking about that i knew was only from him because i hadn't talked to my coworker about that but he also met a need. And there were so many times in my life back during that time when I was trying to learn how to trust him where he did these little things for me that had such a big value and an impact to me because I knew it was only him that did it. There were so many times that I was thinking about stuff 
or that I wanted stuff that I did not have money to get or I didn't know how I was going to take care of it or even provision I needed and I had no clue even with two jobs how I was going to make it happen but he made a way he came through and so those moments for me were moments that were showing me okay not only will he take care of me when I can't take care of myself but he loves me better than anybody else could ever love me because he lets me know in the smallest ways like there are things that only he could do that I know had to be him because I had not expressed it to anybody else and so we checked that off the list and it was like okay so now you know I'll take care of you when you can't take care of yourself now you know that I love you completely even right down to the very smallest things in your heart and mind and then came the time to relinquish the control and take the leap but I was able by that point to say, you know what, God, you have proven to me that you're faithful and that you will take care of me when I can't. And you have proven to me that you love me wholly and completely. And so now I can give control over to you and trust you because I feel secure. Women, come on, y'all. Y'all know that in a relationship, in order for us to feel safe with the person we are with, we got to have security. We have to know and we have to really have a firm, solid foundation that we're loved and that we are secure and that we are taken care of. And I don't I don't even just mean monetary wise, like because I understand that the mindset of the stay at home wife, that's beautiful. But I and I'm not saying that your husband as head of household should not be taking care of you. But security is more than monetary. Security is more than can you pay my bills? Okay, Destiny's child. Security is, do you listen when I speak? Security is, do I know I'm loved? Do I know I'm safe with you? Do I know that if I'm having a bad day, that you love me enough that you will be concerned about what's going on in my heart and mind? Do you love me enough that you care enough about the things that are important to me to make them a priority to you? That is when we know that we're loved and we're secure. That's that's where trust comes from. I don't need your money. You ain't got to pay all my bills, but I need to know that I'm secure and that I'm loved and I'm safe. I need those three things to be able to trust. And so that is what God did for me. He showed me. Oh, and y'all, even when I was running from him, because how many of y'all know that when you have been traumatized and you've gone through heartbreaks and people have lied to you and you have gone through uh, getting your hopes up just to be disappointed and as soon as you think life is getting better, something else happens. It is hard for you to take something the first time, the second time, or the third time. How many of y'all know that when you're in a relationship with somebody, a good person, after you've been in a relationship with some horrible people, it takes a while, no matter how safe that person makes you feel, it takes you a while to settle into that thing because you know what it feels like to be lied to. You know what it feels like for somebody to tell you you're safe and then they turn around and they violate that safety. You know what it feels like for somebody to say, you can trust me and they turn around and break that trust. So even when God was showing me initially, I was still kind of like, mm, okay, that's cool, but I still can't trust. Okay, that's nice. That's cute, but I'm still having a problem. Okay, yeah, you did show me that today. You did make a way, but I'm still a little, it's still a little rocky for me. I'm still having a hard time. Y'all, he pursued me relentlessly. And I think that's what we have to understand about the love of God. It, it is his relentless pursuit of you. It is that when you are giving up on yourself, he's not giving up on you. It is even when you have given up on him, he is not giving up on you. And so to learn how to trust God, you have got to allow him to show you who he is. And this is what helped me learn how to trust him. Because in order to trust, you got to get from under the control of it all. And in order to get from the control of it all, you've got to understand that you are loved and secured in a place so that you can let go of the control. If any of y'all ever played, now I had cousins that played dirty, but if any of y'all ever had real rock solid cousins that didn't drop y'all and y'all played that game, Leap of Faith, right? Where one person would get behind you and they will catch you when you fall okay some of y'all felt easy and secure to fall back because you knew your cousin was solid they weren't gonna play you you wasn't gonna hit the ground you were not gonna bump your head okay some of us had cousins that played dirty some of us had them cousins that threw us in the deep part of the pool and they knew we couldn't swim and they was trying to teach us lessons and teach us how to swim by experience right okay in that journey with God to learn how to trust and let control go 
he shows you you're safe so you can fall back. So you have to learn how to trust God and how to let him show you who he is. And the way you learn about, you experience the character of God. You experience the love of God by a couple of things. Number one, you ask the Holy Spirit to make you sensitive to it. And then you spend time in the word of God, getting to know him, getting to know his thoughts towards you, getting to know his heart towards you. So that when you ask the Holy Spirit to make you sensitive to what he's doing in your life, you can discern what he's doing because you know what it looks and sounds like. And the only way that you know what it looks and sounds like is to spend time with him. I'm currently in a relationship with an amazing person before we really got into um, and, and y'all again this was the thing about having control for me I was I, I was I'm used to rushing and controlling and in our dating we really took time to get to know each other and I mean texting talking like really getting to know each other asking hard questions we did not just jump into a relationship and so that's the same thing with God. He knows that you're struggling in that area. So you have to spend time with him. I had to spend time with the person that I'm currently in a relationship with to get to know him, to feel safe and secure in that space. That's in any relationship. And so the same way that you have to develop trust in your, uh, in your intimate relationships and your, um, with like family and friends and in your romantic relationships with people you have to do the, your relationship with god is a relationship it is the greatest love relationship that you will ever have and you have to do the same thing there you have to develop trust by spending time with god getting to know god allowing him to show you who he is and allowing him to see you for who you are because none of us is hidden from god he says in his word that our forms are not hidden from him. He knows every part of us, broken, fancy, bougie, hidden, the stuff we, we think we're hiding from him, the thoughts, the words, the things we think we're saying in private, the things we think we're thinking and feeling in private. He knows it. So getting to a space with God of allowing him to show you and allowing him in, that's how you get to trust him, y'all. And this word is so heavy on my heart right now because even in this moment with all that experience, I am waiting on God to do a thing in my life. I'm waiting on an answer for a thing. And I find myself saying, God, I believe you. But like the man in the Bible, I believe, but forgive my unbelief. Forgive the moments that I find it hard to believe, even though I have experience with you that tells me you're going to take care of this. Forgive the human moments that I'm having where I'm in my flesh trying to figure out the backup plan in case it doesn't go my way so that I can do this thing over here. That's not trusting God. If I'm if I'm asking him to do it, I got to be still and let him do it. I got to get out of my flesh and stop trying to figure out the backup for the backup and the backup in case God doesn't come through because he's going to always come through. And even when it don't look like what you want it to look like and the answer is not what you want it to be, he's still coming through. Make sure you understand that this is relinquishing control. So even in this moment, y'all, where my mind is constantly on this thing that I'm waiting for, that I'm hopeful for, 